This color jitter option is very common in painting softwares. Really funky stuff. I find it very useful with the par stroke option to bring some quick variations in hues and values. But I heard these guys were laughing at Blender because she doesn't have it in texture painting mode. I took that personally as a 3D brush maniac and hand painting artist. I had to investigate this matter and I admit this is the only time I felt true despair in Blender. I simply couldn't find any clue. I have no idea of codings related to Blender. Maybe that could help. After giving up, I suddenly had some realizations one day and kind of made this on a whim. So how exactly? I think the details doesn't matter that much anymore. Let me just show you how it is done instead. I am going to duplicate one of the presets renaming it to something relevant so this one will be our new brush for jitter testing i'll increase the spacing a lot it will separate the brush stumps more and more need to play a little with the fall off option i think the constant one works nice and here is the main part make a new texture in this tab this button will teleport us to the texture edit mode according to my findings the cloud option works the best for jittering I need an extra large texture so I'm going to pick a very high value and we need to select color instead of gray scale. That was the most important point and we can already see some hue variations but the value of color became so dark than the one we actually picked. So we need to raise it. This brightness option can help. 1.5 is pretty good most of the time and the contrast and saturation defines the nature of jittering. I am lowering them a little since I don't want crazy amount of variations right away. And finally, select mapping mode to random and also check this random setting. And congratulations, you have unlocked jittering in texture painting mode. Who is laughing now, huh? But here is a disclaimer. This is not the exact method of those 2D softwares. It is more like a workaround. Still, the best part is we can control how it works. The settings are your best friend. They can help you to get less variations in saturations or values or more in case you need that. Almost like how it works in painting softwares. If you lower contrast, then you get less hue variations or the vice versa. As simple as that. So this might look like a simple stuff, but when combined with other options, you will be able to make a lots of brushes such as this. These are in fact part of my freshly released brush pack. I am really loving them a lot. I feel like finally Blender is strong enough to compete with painting softwares. It just needs one more feature and it will be game over for those elite painting softwares. Such sweet dreams. So if you don't want to try all that stuff about brush making and wish to get to the fun part right away, then you can go for it. Grab it while the sweet sale is going on by becoming an early riser, sorry an early bird. Now let's actually do something with those cool brushes. I will push them to their limits and kind of spam them all in this apple. You will get this file in my sketchfab link, just a heads up. Every mesh here shares the same material and they are packed inside one texture space. Let's jump into the texture painting mode. I'll create a new texture, preferably 8K. You can probably go for 4K if you feel like things are lagging a lot when you try to paint. And I'm going to pick a cool neutral color for overall background. Neutral colors are better when you try to build up a painting. Don't start from a bright default white background, it messes up your perception of colors. So these are the brushes you get from this brush pack. They are designed for very graphical style texturing. We got all sort of hard and soft brushes with color jittering or not and also a few texture brushes. I plan to make a bright warm looking apple. So a darker background can help it to pop up even more. Let's use the bucket tool to darken it. Now we are ready to paint. By the way, I will definitely prefer to work from a color palette this time because we have lots of jittering going on in our brushes. So actual colors we pick will eventually get lost. So sampling colors will not be very helpful. 
Instead, a palette can help us to get them back. The process is very simple. We select colors and add them to the palette. I need something reddish for base colors. Let's go with this. You can just try to find a palette in the internet if you don't want to set up your own. Let's pick a dark variation. So I have that warm light cool shadow relationship in my mind. So I'm trying to go toward darker and cooler tones. Something as far as purple. By the way, you can always check out Marco's tutorials if you wish to learn more about light and shadow relations. I'm not actually thinking about a lot of theories here. I can accelerate things for a stylized look, but I'm trying to stay within line to some extent. Let's pick up some bright warm colors. This might work. Picking the highlight is a bit tricky. And also some really dark colors for ambient occlusions. We are all set now. Let's start painting. I will try to demonstrate as much brushes as possible, so it may look a bit messy at the end. This brush is my favorite, Jitterer. I love the randomness it provides without that much brush jittering. It can help to quickly block out colors without having to change brush colors a lot to get those nice variations in hues and bellows. Let's fill in the red color. This very large area will be blocked with it. Sometimes I subconsciously pick colors from the apple itself, but this palette can help me to get back to the original colors. I am using this graphic brush too. It provides the most random pattern among all of my brushes. I am using it to break up the edges in the transition of light to shadow. This one is the blocky jitter. It just sprinkles colorful blocks. It is very random too. I think I am ready to go toward warmer tones, so let's pick that. This saturation feels a bit off, so I am changing to another brush with a more opaque look. You can play around with the strength setting and pressure sensitivity. Sometimes I just like to turn them off while doing graphical style texturing. It can help with lagging issues as well. In fact, too much pressure sensitivity is not needed for such graphical look. I am softening up the light transition a little. Let's try to give some highlights. This one is too dark, so I am going to increase the value. Also, we got this fun brush over here. It lets us to mix colors with a pigmented effect, sort of like pastel blending. In texture brushes, we got even more graphical brushes. They don't have crazy amount of color jittering going on. They are more for graphical patterns, kind of like comic style. I feel so comfortable with them, such natural feel. Be sure to face the painting area toward your screen when you use such texture brushes. Otherwise, the texture will get very stretched. It is a shame that normal orientation of brush to surface it's not a thing for Blender's texture painting mode. It could help with some stretching issues. Let's hope that it will be available some days. Let's do the same for highlights and softening up some sharp edges with them. This one is like a pastel color on a canvas. It might come handy from time to time. And some ambient reflection at the back can help. We are going to choose a very purple and cool color for that. And this ambient occlusion can go at the bottom where the apple meets the floor. So this is pretty much it. We got highlights, ambient occlusions, local colors and also some ambient cool reflection in shadows. And don't forget some bounce lights in shadow areas. For the rest of the time, I'll keep exploring possibilities with the brushes. There are actually a few brushes which I didn't get to introduce in this video. They don't feel appropriate in this style of texturing, but they are pretty fun in their own field. For instance, the organic jitter is nice for painting natural elements like rocks and mosses, also some quick trees and foliages. You will naturally understand their purpose as you try them out. And this is the last major part, cast shadow on the floor. I started from a very dark tone and then shifting toward 
something lighter and cooler. The dark shadow is actually warmer in tone to indicate light bounce from the local color of our apple. So warm light and cool shadow is not just about strictly using warm colors in light and cool colors in shadows. There are scopes of exploring and go beyond. Let's fast forward to the future. I just keep playing with colors at the back. You can give that a try on your own without getting complete spoiler. This should be enough for this quick tutorial I suppose. What do you think? I'm going to put some more highlights here. A curvy one to indicate the contour at this top side. The cast shadow looks a bit off though. It is because I was not too mindful about the trendiness and the path of light and shadow. I don't actually care too much about that because being a little wrong can actually help with achieving better trendiness. We are not machines so no need to be pixel accurate. We still try to stay within the boundary of nature. And this rake brush is so much fun. It almost changes hues on a per stroke basis. It is not as perfect as painting software but still pretty good for blender. You can adjust the shadow by moving the floor if things look too much wrong. And we are done. I hope it was a fun and enjoyable tutorial for you. Texture painting definitely got more fun for me as I included these brushes to my arsenal. And you can now do that too. Until next time and happy painting.